Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to replace your battery on your Fitbit Versa 4 or Sense 2. It's the same battery, same process, and we're going to be using this toolkit. One other thing that will help you while doing this repair is some sort of heating device. I have a heat gun, uh, but a hair dryer will also do. First thing we're going to do is heat up the screen a little bit. I'm just going to take my heat gun and go around. I'm not very hot. I'm at 150 degrees. It's not very hot at all. Once our screen has been heated up, we'll take our screen pry tool here and we will insert it opposite side of the button. You want to go straight down, straight down in between the screen and the bezel of the housing. You just want to get a little bit in and kind of work your way in. As you can see there, we are in between the screen and the housing. Now we're going to just go very carefully kind of parallel with the screen and just slowly work away at that glue. Also a little isopropyl alcohol can help. Uh, it's not super necessary, but it helps eat away at the glue a little bit. Stick it in there, kind of rotate it back and forth. Just chew up that glue. We're gonna do this on all four sides of the screen and we can heat up again if we feel like that's what we need. Once you've got one side up, you want to go from the top of the screen, get your pry tool in there, get rid of any more adhesive, and you want to pry kind of down or toward you from here, because the ribbon does bend. So from here, we'll pry this, just pull in any of the rest of the adhesive, you can just pull off. Try not to bend the ribbon too much. And like that, we are into the watch. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our T2 screwdriver and we're gonna unscrew these two screws here. Once we've done that, we're gonna take our plastic spudger and we're gonna very carefully lift this heat shield out of place and just put it to the side with the screws. And then we'll rotate it and we're gonna put this tip of the plastic spudger in there and just pop the screen off next thing we're going to do is unscrew these two screws once we've done that you're just going to lift these three clips we're going to be very gentle with these clips we're going to put the plastic spudger in start with this big one put the tip in and just very gently lift up you can even use the pointy side just be very careful now we can use the spudger to disconnect these ribbons. You just want to pull them straight out of where they're plugged in. Now that we've got all these unplugged, we can stick our spudger in right here. We're just going to lift this from the housing, put the housing to the side. And as you can see, we've got our battery that's in here. So we gotta go ahead and unscrew the board we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver here. To remove all four of those screws, you'll just fold back the motherboard and you will have access to the battery. Take our plastic spudger and we're just going to give it a little pry out of there. Pull that battery out. All right, once we've done that, we'll grab our new battery. We'll kind of bend the ribbon like the other one was. And what we'll do is we will plug in the battery first. It's a lot easier to do that than trying to get it into the housing and then plugging it in. So we'll line up the clip, push down when it's lined up, like so. All right, make sure it's still plugged in and just fold the motherboard back on top. We'll screw in those four Phillips screws. All right, now that we've got all four Phillips screws screwed back into the board, we can set this back into the housing. You're gonna want this big ribbon to be right here. We'll just slide it in, kind of tap it into place. 
We'll plug in all three of these ribbons. Remember to be very careful with the clips when folding them down. All right, now that those are plugged in, we can screw in those T2s. Once those are screwed in, I like to, to clean the outside of the housing or the little where the screen sits. So I'll remove all of this old adhesive just so that the new adhesive sits properly. I like to use my spudger either end or both ends to clean it up. All right, now we've got a majority off. It doesn't need to be perfect, but we'll grab our screen, line it up. I like to sometimes fold just a little bit that screen ribbon like so. Line it up. And press down with your spudger. It does not need to be very a lot of pressure you want to try to feel if it's in there and just nestle it in all right you know you got it plugged in when you get a little pull test as well as obviously the screen is working so now that we've got that working we'll touch the touch good to go now we'll kind of hold it in place and be very careful here because we don't want it to unplug and it will unplug so we'll hold it kind of like this and we're going to screw in this shield again. That'll hold it much better in place. So throw it on top here, take our screwdriver, now that the heat shield's plugged in, all we have to do is glue down the screen. Mine already has the tip on, but you'll take the blue cap off and screw the tip in. I like to start back here where the screen will sit. You'll run just a little thin line. You want to make sure that you get everywhere though so it creates a proper seal. So I'll start with that side. And I'll fold this out and just go along this inside of the bezel. Once you made it around the entire screen, make sure you have no gaps. Then you can line it up and push it down. And it helps to have a paper towel to clean up the edges and the excess glue. Take the paper towel or the toilet paper and just brush off any excess glue. The more you clean up now, the less you have to at the very end. And you just give it a little rub, make sure that it's not moving around. And then I will take a clamp and set it in the middle of the screen so that it will evenly uh, divide the pressure, but you can just use something heavy like a heavy book or even like a five pound weight, just something to uh, apply constant pressure that's decently heavy. And once you've done that, you have officially completed your repair on your VersaFor slash Sense2.